Hi, and welcome to another episode of the 8-Bit Retro Refix. And on this week's episode, we're taking a look at the Commodore 16. This is one was in last week's video, um, where we checked them out and there were the two easy fixes. One were a fuse and one were a CPU. Um, what I wanted to do is the 8501 to 6510 Commodore 64 CPU conversion. The reason why I wanted to do that is because the CPUs for these, the 8501s, are getting astronomical in prices. They're about 50, 60 pounds now. Um, so that's what we're going to do on this one. So let's get to it. Hi, so this is the conversion that we're going to do. Um, it's easy enough to find. So if you just go on to hackjunk.com, um, you'll see on the list down this side here, it's got the C16 plus 4 8501 to 6510 CPU conversion. If you just click on that, it brings you to this page. So this is basically the one that I've done. Um, the board that I bought was slightly different to this one, it was just a different way around, different colour, but it is the same thing. So if you just look on eBay, you will find these kits, I think they're only about £20, something like that. Let's see if we can find that for you. So that's the kit that physically I've got. I didn't buy this kit, um, I bought the board and it was just separate, I showed you that in the previous video. Um, the kernel ROM you can get from um, hackjunk.com so you can burn yourself an EEPROM. If you don't know how to burn EEPROMs, um, if you take a look at the video where I did um, how to make a Commodore 64 kernel ROM, it is exactly the same process. I'll pop a picture up to that video and then that's in my playlist. Um, you can take a look at that if you don't know how to burn the ROMs. So that's the one that I purchased. Um, so what it says in this is basically you solder the pin headers across the bottom, put yourself a socket on um, and plug your chip in. There is further down a little jumper on this board which enables the tape drive. If you don't put that jumper on, the tape drive won't work, it won't power. Um, but unfortunately the, the tape motor will continuously to run. There is a diode that you can fit on the back where it will stop the tape deck, um, etc. and things like that. But if you're not bothered about it and you're just going to load a game, you can just stop the tape deck anyway. So it's no real biggie at all. Um, the only downside of it is if you've got a multi-loading tape, you know, where you've got to load each level off tape, you're going to have to remember to stop the tape deck. And that's it. That's the only difference. So what we're doing... <clears throat> Down here, this is a plus four mod for it. The, the, the extra board, as you can see there, um, that's different because it's laid further over and it's sat further down because of the keyboards. On the C16, it's not an issue with that. So you just do the little board like this one and plug it in and swap that kernel ROM with the EEPROM that you've burnt. Um, that should be pretty much it. So if I scroll down, um, and find the other pictures for you. Now you see there, that's where the um, little jumper is for the tape deck. Mine was on the top, so it's underneath the chip. Um, but it's the same thing. So all you do is just put a blob of solder or a jumper wire over there. If you want to enable the tape deck to stop, so all you need is a diode that goes from pin 3 of the U9 up to pin 4 um, just here where it's showing you on here and it's just showing you that's where the cassette port connects into So that will should um, enable the stop of the tape once it's loaded Of course you can go on with different models you've got the plus four it works exactly the same again on this one You just have to go to U7 here um, and up to the cassette port point up here again and that's the same. Um, that's another side of a plus four. 
it goes into how the jumper creates the bridges between the pins between the 8501 and the 6510 but you shouldn't need to deal with any of this um, because all that's pre-built into the board anyway and that's it so let's pop over to the C16 that we were repairing um, that needed a CPU and let's take a look at it so this is inside our C16 that we was looking at last week um, that needed the CPU I've already swapped out the kernel ROM I've already created the board soldered this pin headers in put a socket onto it and plugged the 6510 in I didn't bother, like I said, with the diode, I wasn't too bothered about that. But if you want to, if you just follow that website, that should enable that for you. So, let's um, see if it fires up and makes any difference. Don't think it'll make any difference, because it should actually work exactly the same as the 8501. Um, but as I said, with just that tape issue. So I don't know whether you can hear that, but I'll try and put the microphone close to it so you can hear. I just seem to be getting a little pulsy noise from the tape deck. It does get quieter and quieter and quieter to a point where it's not there when you're switching it on, switching it off. But you can just quite hear that tapping noise, can't you? But that does, as I said, that does go away once the game's loaded um, and, it, and it does seem to stop pulsing like that. So let's get up to the screen and let's see if this tape deck loads. Right, okay, let's switch it on, let's see if she boots up. Yep, she's started up, look. Everything seems all okay. We've got keys, yeah, everything hunky dory. Yeah, <laughs> we do sing cats, Harry. So let's see if that tape deck loads. Ah, so as soon as I press play, that tapping noise on the tape deck stopped. There we go, we found Beachhead and it goes straight across and straight through. I did notice that the tape doesn't stop. I'm not sure on the C16s whether it does stop. Um, and on the C64 and Vic20, once it finds it, it, it stops and then proceeds a little bit later. But this seemed to just carry on straight through, which is no biggie. That's, that's fine if it wants to do that. So I might skip you through to the end, so you're not having to watch these wavy lines. That's just the loading screen, good old beachhead, great game on the Commodore 64. I don't know what it's like on this, um, I've not had a chance to play it to be fair really. Um, I won't be playing it today, I just wanted to show you that the tape deck is loading and everything's working okay. So let's just skip you through now um, until the end. There you go, we've uh, loaded up and yes the tape deck is still continuously turning. So I'm just going to stop that now. And the tape step started making that pulsy noise again as soon as I stopped it. It does fade down though, it's strange. It might be just because I've got the tape deck left. Let me turn, let me move it. Hmm. We'll have a look into that, maybe that diode a little bit later and see if it makes a difference. So this is Beachhead. We can see that the CPU is running. We've now got a 6510 in there from the Commodore 64. So there we go, the game started up. Doesn't look as good as the Commodore 64. Well, it's not far off on graphics, to be fair. I've got to give it that much. But the sound isn't as good, because um, it doesn't have the SID chip. Oh. <laughs> so if you've enjoyed this video, guys, please hit the subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and hit the notification bell. Drop me a comment down at the bottom if you've enjoyed this video, or if you've got any problems, or you're telling me I'm doing something wrong. Just give me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. So there you go, we've converted the 8501 to 6510 Commodore 64 CPU to save us a fortune. As you saw in the video, if you go to hackjump.com, all the instructions are there, it's really easy. Um, if you pop onto eBay and search for 8501 CPU, they'll come up, they come straight up. They're only about £20 like I showed you, um, so you can buy that conversion board pop a 6510 into it, put solder the jumper across to the tape deck if you're going to use tapes. Um, myself, I've got the 1551 disk drive, so I don't tend to use tapes very much. Um, but still, it's still nice to have that addition to be able to use tapes if you want. 
So it's really, really easy to convert that over, as you've seen in the video. I didn't want to show you building it. I didn't want to show you soldering it all in and making e problems again. I've done that in future videos. Um, I did pop a picture up. I'll pop it up again to show you how to make Commodore 64 kernel ROMs. And the process for doing that, for doing the 16 kernel ROM, is exactly the same. So, I mean, apart from selecting which chip that you need, it, it's exactly the same. So thank you for watching another episode. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell for all up and coming videos. And pop over and see Joseph Retro Bits, Retro For You and Captain Commodore. They all do some great stuff. Joseph does a lot of programming and some repairs. Retro For You has just started out as a new guy to the YouTube. So pop over and see him um, and check out his channel drop him a sub and drop him a comment. Uh, Captain Commodore's the same, he's relatively new but he's got quite a few videos up there and he goes into some in-depth things with the PLAs and etc and things like that on the Commodore 64. So once again thanks again for watching another episode of the 8-Bit Retro Refix and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!